This is Unwind Your Mind Back to God Written by David Hofmeister and read by Tarana Singh In today's episode we continue Transfer of Training with Book 3 In Chapter 2, this is Section 1, Part 1 Living in Community, Demands and Requests Part 1 Friend My desire to see you as uncooperative must be my desire to see the Holy Spirit as uncooperative. It feels helpful to delve into that. Why do I not want to trust the Holy Spirit? Why do I want to see Him as giving me a tough time? David Any time you feel an upset towards any person or you feel that anybody is being uncooperative, that is an expression of the authority problem. The whole idea of respect and cooperation has to come from within. Any time there seems to be friction or something that is not going the way I want it to go, that is just an expression of the authority problem of I can still make myself and I can still have things work out to my liking, to my satisfaction. Start with the specifics. Notice that there are specific things you have an investment in. Friend, in this case, the specific I have an investment in is having you be cooperative. And I think I know what it is, or how that is supposed to look, or how I would recognize it if I saw it. Friend. David. So you have a picture of what cooperation looks like, and in the attempt to compare it with others, it is still the mechanism that is being used. It is very simple when you realize that the deceived mind will tenaciously try to find things that it can pick apart or it can find wrong on the screen in order to hold on to and justify its position that it is right about its own unique identity and its own separate will. Friend, I feel it. I feel that tenacity of trying to hold on. David, and how does it feel? You are in the middle of the rules for decision section of the course. You have come to the point where you can say, at least I can decide I do not like how I feel. Friend, well, I don't like how I feel. That is why I'm here. Otherwise, I would be still upstairs lying on the couch. David. Well, whether it is something specific or something more general, like why won't this friend be more cooperative with me? It is the same in either case. As the rules for decision point out, if you decide to have a happy day and you are going along having a happy day, And then all of a sudden, you find yourself upset about anything at all. Then the basic statement is that you forgot what to decide. Or you have asked a question by yourself and have set an answer in your own terms. That is what the deceived mind does all the time. It thinks it knows what it needs to have a happy day. In this case, you can go back to the original perception of what you reacted to and see that it has asked a question by itself and it has set an answer in its terms. Notice how tenaciously it hangs on to its own question, to wanting the answer to come in its terms. It does not want to step back and go, Oops! I forgot what to decide. I tried to ask a question by myself. 
go back to the basic thing of Father, what is your will for me? I do not know what clarity or vision is, but I am willing to be shown. It is going to keep coming up in a whole variety of forms where the tenacity just really wants to hang on to an individual will. It wants to be right about a separate self and it will use anything in the world to justify itself. Friend, right, it feels like I want you to be uncooperative when I get down under it a little bit. You know it probably does not matter what you say or what you do. If it was not the request about this, it would be something else. I want to get underneath that to see what value it seems to hold. David, it is the thinking of the world. It is summarized in this passage. The reasoning by which the world is made, on which it rests, by which it is maintained, is simply this. You are the cause of what I do. Your presence justifies my wrath. And, your ex- and you exist and think apart from me. While you attack, I must be innocent. And what I suffer from is your attack. Text chapter 27 Section 7 That is a pretty direct statement of the ego's purpose for the world. The cause of my upset and suffering is outside of me. You must begin to understand that all special relationships are entered into with anger. The ego's purpose for all relationships is anger. It does not state that on a conscious level, It does not allow that to be brought into awareness. But all special relationships were forged in anger. The anger is just looking to come out, to be projected onto something or somebody. Everyone who believes they are here in this world, everyone identified with the world has this anger. Another way you can say it is that you are asked for special favor from God and God said no. He could not grant that special favor. God would be seized to God. Love would cease to be love if it would have said yes to that special request that the deceived mind made. It asked for special favor. That is where the anger is coming from. It is just that It is under the surface. If you think someone is not fulfilling your expectations or not living up to the role you assigned to them, there will be anger. The perception is, you are not living up to my idea of cooperation or whatever the expectation is. If you are angry, it is because your mind is constructing it so. That is the reason you are unhappy. Because someone is not living up to the role you assigned them. Turn it around and see that you assigned the roles. You are the one who gave them out. Everything happening is by your own election. There is nothing out of place. There is nothing out there that has the power to make you weak or to take away your peace of mind, or to make you happy or peaceful. Suffering is an emphasis upon all that the world has done to injure you. Text chapter 27, section 7 That is when you forget you are dreaming a dream. You think that you are on the screen and you think that things are not working out well. You think you are being mistreated and abused. The specialness of even trying to compare is still the belief that you are not getting a fair shake in this. 
You have no question. You have to question the thinking that is saying you are not getting a fair shake. Instead of trying to arrange things on the screen in order to get a fair shake. There will never be a way to arrange the effects to get a fair shake when, as they say in Alcoholics Anonymous, it is the stinking thinking that has to be looked at. It is the belief that you can be unfairly treated. It is the belief that you can be treated as less than. And there is a belief there. If you believe you are unworthy, then you will just look for witnesses for that. You find what you are looking for. Friend, this all seems absurd in the sense that being the dreamer of the dream makes it so simple. There is only one thing to think about. There are not millions of things to think about. There is one. Well, that is pretty nice that I can live with. And all the other benefits that come with being the dreamer of the dream. There is no upset in it. There is no, who did what to me? On the other hand, being in the dream is just a mess. What is it that wants to hang on to that? There is nothing beneficial about that. It does not feel good. It is not fun. It is exhausting. I am sitting here thinking, why would I ever want to do that? It makes no sense whatsoever. So why would I want to see you as uncooperative? Why do I not want to trust the Holy Spirit? David The atonement is seeing that you are the dreamer of the dream. You have to see yourself as the dreamer before you can accept another purpose for the dream, which would be the atonement. And the atonement, as described earlier in the text, is a total commitment. The deceived mind is not so big on commitment to begin with. But total commitment? It seems to all come down to the need to overhaul the mind, to question every value and belief. We will continue with the concluding part of this section 1 of Chapter 2 of Book 3 in tomorrow's episode.